Some supplement brands are like shooting stars. They burst through the industry in this spectacular arc, but they don't last long. They just leave a trail of lessons we can learn. And I'm not going to build unnecessary suspense here, so let's start this content off by decoding who the Shooting Star supplement brand is and what was the news that sparked the inspiration for this piece of content. On March 18th, 2024, it was announced that Goalie Nutrition would be acquired by a collection of investors that includes its Mexico distributor, a private equity firm, and one of the company's original founders, Deepak Argarwa. More interestingly, the transaction, which has the full support of the company's lenders, is part of a prepackaged bankruptcy process in Canada. Wait, what? You mean the company that introduced the world to apple cider vinegar gummy supplements just filed for bankruptcy? Weren't they doing like a half billion in revenue just a few years ago? Yes, but before I get into all the sour tasting details around the fall of Goalie Nutrition, how about we go back to the beginning of the founding story because it's extremely relatable to any aspiring entrepreneur with an idea. In the mid 2010s, apple cider vinegar got a major boost in popularity from celebrities touting its weight loss and health benefits. That's what led to millions of consumers taking shots of apple cider vinegar every morning, one of which was the wife of Michael Patinsky. But she, like many others, quickly realized that drinking vinegar was gross and watching that daily unpleasant experience became the spark that eventually turned into goalie nutrition. At the same time, the form factor of vitamins was changing from pills to gummies. I believe in the mid 2010s, gummies had somewhere around like a 10% uh, market share of the vitamin market. And then only a handful of years later, they more than doubled in categorical share. So Michael Batinsky set out not just to mask the taste of apple cider vinegar, but make a delicious gummy supplement that felt more like a candy than a health food product. And it's hard to argue that he didn't achieve that as Goalie Nutrition's apple cider vinegar gummies has amassed over 350,000 Amazon ratings at an average of 4.4 since its debut on the marketplace in September of 2019. And it's hard to place enough emphasis on how insane this growth was for Goalie Nutrition on Amazon, but it became the number one selling brand in the massive household and health category within the first six months of its existence. Oh, and this was all achieved with one SKU that had essentially a single ingredient in it. Wild. But they say the brightest stars burn the fastest, right? Regardless of today's bankruptcy process reality, that climbed from nothing to $502 million in net sales within basically 26 short months is insanity. And if you've been a longtime follower of my content, you might remember that around that 2021 calendar year end, I made a declaration that Goalie Nutrition should sell its business, but also mentioned that many factors would likely make that extremely difficult. Can you believe that Goalie Nutrition, a company founded in 2019, already does well north of $500 million in annualized revenue? To further blow your mind, it does this with only a handful of SKUs. The company has engaged Centerview Partners in late 2020, I believe, to explore a sale of its business. Now, the initial process has drawn the attention from private equity firms, large strategics, and SPAC issuers that are trying to deploy a bunch of capital. Now, why hasn't anyone pounced on this yet? Um, pretty simple, I think, here is that Revenue base plus the huge growth rate plus the COVID-19 effect aided plus maybe competitive pressure plus unlikelihood of margin expansion creates this kind of scary investment proposition. I guess what I didn't know at the time was just how bad things would get so quickly for Goalie Nutrition. Mentioned in the bankruptcy documents was the fact that Goalie Nutrition sustained significant losses to the tune of $100 million since March of 2022. Furthermore, Goalie Nutrition Management outlined a collection of reasons they believe attributed to those significant losses. So let me put on my professor outfit and extract some insightful lessons from those stated reasons, but also add some of my own opinions 
around the fall of goalie nutrition that could be helpful to the supplement industry stakeholders. Firstly, how about we talk about the elephant in the room, or at least what would be for any savvy CPG professional? How the heck did goalie nutrition support this type of growth? Yes, the gross margins on these apple cider vinegar gummies were quite high, but not high enough to grow from zero to half billion in sales in a little over two years. Now, I have little understanding of what the co-founders put into the business from the start, but I do know that the venture capital firm, VMG Partners, acquired a 5% stake of Goalie Nutrition in late 2021. That doesn't solve the initial hypergrowth phase though, right? But if anyone knows anything about the supplement industry, they know that contract manufacturers oftentimes act as pseudo private equity firms that finance inventory for their fastest growing and strongest customers. These could be as simple as extending different payment terms or even producing large blanket orders of finished goods based on future sales projections that are then held on the manufacturer's books until the brand needs it. Being on both sides of the equation as a strategy consultant, I can say that supplement brands continue to be relatively undercapitalized due to several variables and contract manufacturers play a crucial role in filling that gap. Yes, contract manufacturers essentially riding the growth of brands can be transformative to their own business as you are only as good as the brands you manufacture for, but this decision also quite often leaves them in shambles. This is because it places leadership or ownership outside of their core competencies of being operational experts and business diversification strategies are usually overlooked when times are great, thus eventually causing key customer risk. And while I didn't just mention that information because it was about better nutritionals, it does mirror a lot of what supposedly happened to the contract manufacturer for Goalie Nutrition. In a statement filed by Better Nutritionals founder Sharon Hoffman as part of his own company's Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing that eventually led to Chapter 7 liquidation, he stated the contract manufacturer generated revenues of $4 million in 2018, the year before Goalie Nutrition, and had capacity of about 400,000 bottles of gummies per month. The following year, with Goalie Nutrition being on the market only a handful of months, Better Nutritionals jumped way up to $23 million in revenue, and it made facility improvements that tripled monthly capacity. But to keep up with the huge demand for Goalie Nutrition gummies, which supposedly became 93% of its total revenue, Better Nutritionals moved into a 420,000 square foot facility with rent costs that was 35 times higher than its original facility in mid 2021. After very costly manufacturing equipment upgrades were done, the new Better Nutritionals facility had capacity that reached more than 10 million bottles monthly. And I don't wanna get into allegations, especially considering I believe the lawsuit just recently got dismissed, but boy, the arguments outlined in that lawsuit by Better Nutritionals founder Sharon Hoffman against Goalie Nutrition, its owners, and several other related parties were something that could be easily adapted into a Netflix movie because they were that interesting and maybe even more crazy than the rapid sales growth of Goalie Nutrition. But to sort of piggyback off those liquidity constraints, Goalie Nutrition Management also stated it impacted the company's ability to advertise products properly. So reading this one, I thought about this in two different ways, which were caused by changes in both the finance and marketing environments. On the finance front, they raised capital from selling equity to VMG partners at the absolute tippy top of valuations before both the public and private equity markets fell. And as you likely remember, these markets fell because the Federal Reserve needed to rapidly increase borrower rates in an attempt to tame extremely high consumer inflation. So even if Goalie Nutrition tried to sell more equity in 2022, that would have very likely resulted in a down round. I believe also they had the desire to test the IPO markets, but again, that opportunity closed as the stock markets fell. And if they tried to extend credit, it would cost them more in interest expense on top of the debt they already had that was suddenly more expensive. Now, on the marketing front, Goalie Nutrition had arguably one of the strongest micro-influencer or affiliate marketing machines 
in the entire consumer goods industry at the time, but it still relied heavily on Facebook advertising for its low cost to get in front of consumers. That being said, the great shutdown increased the demand for Facebook advertising, which in turn increased competition and created much higher costs to advertise. Then in mid-2021, Apple's iOS 14.5 introduced privacy changes that hurt advertisers' ability to attribute sales across all digital marketing platforms, especially Facebook. This meant that not only does it cost more to advertise on Facebook, but tracking can't be relied upon to be accurate. As Facebook advertising became unreliable, Goalie Nutrition needed new ways to drive awareness and growth which is maybe why you saw the brand utilize large celebrities like Jennifer Lopez in national TV commercials. This broad traditional marketing strategy was also paired, and it should be, with large retail expansion into places like Target. But that leads us to the next reason that Goalie Nutrition Management believed attributed to those significant losses. I don't think I need to go into every detail here, but there's obviously many differences in selling supplements online compared to landing products on shelf at just about every US large retailer in a very short amount of time. And it's that speed element that likely caused most of the major problems. But even taking that out of consideration, Goalie Nutrition to be effective would have needed to adjust organizational structure and systems, sales and marketing strategies, they needed to build significantly more inventory and buffer for that inventory and change financial models to take into consideration longer cash conversion cycles. And then finally, any CPG professional with their head on straight knows that even slow and controlled large retail launches almost always have hiccups that need time to work themselves out. But extreme sales growth can make any mistake, even the big ones disappear, right? Well, what happens when that party is over? <laughs> Within months of Goalie Nutrition's founding, the COVID-19 effect spiked demand for wellness supplements, especially ones that included immunity-boosting ingredients like apple cider vinegar. In fact, apple cider vinegar supplements saw a 134% year-over-year growth in 2020, representing the fifth top selling herbal supplement that year. And then in 2021, the apple cider vinegar craze more than doubled its market size again. But the next year was a different story and sales dropped significantly as the COVID-19 effect consumer buying behavior normalized. Furthermore, a double or I guess a triple whammy happened to Goalie Nutrition because of the growth breeds commercialization activity reality within the functional CPG market. With today's fast follower, low barriers to entry business landscape, your best product features are too easy to copy in an insufficient defensible moat. Even if Goalie Nutrition had a patent, which they did, it either didn't cover what was needed to deter the dozens to hundreds of copycat competitors that flooded the market, or they didn't have the legal team or processes or budget in place to manage that external threat. So not only was the market growth of apple cider vinegar supplements trending down starting in 2022, Goalie Nutrition also had to contend with tons of additional competitors in a subcategory that they essentially created a few years ago. Additionally, even those large retail partners like Target launched private label apple cider vinegar gummies that sat right next to Goalie Nutrition on shelf and were roughly 40% cheaper, which is a lesson in itself because while price is and always will continue to be a huge purchase criterion, the impact of private label competition is lessened when you've built a strong brand. In my opinion, Goalie Nutrition was a product company, not a brand. And those Goalie Nutrition products, great or not, are only the entry fee to compete in today's market. Instead, Winners and losers in the supplement industry are largely determined by what you build off of those great products. In today's marketplace, younger consumers are increasingly looking for visionary brands that are radically and bravely changing both our individual and global cultures with exciting and bold new lifestyle choices. And it's that strategic narrative boldness that attracts these younger consumers, but also provides a distinctiveness that's highly defensible from competitive landscape perspective. You want your brand to become truly essential, visible, and celebrated parts of its customers' lives. This is why the smartest companies become focused less on product-based differentiation over time, as they know that competing on that alone will only provide a transient advantage. 
Goalie Nutrition never fully transitioned away from that product-based marketing approach. Yes, Goalie Nutrition achieved its B Corporation certification in early 2023, but even, and I still think current CEO that stated recently before the bankruptcy that Goalie Nutrition will continue focusing on its secret sauce of taking high-functioning single ingredients, explaining them to consumers, and making them tasty. Sounds like the same old, same old approach to me, but at least it seems Goalie Nutrition has discontinued or modified its advertising to avoid conveying unsupported messages that got them in consistent trouble with the National Advertising Division of the Better Business Bureau's national programs and class action lawsuits. And since we have come full circle and are back on the legal topic, maybe we should end here with the last and final lesson that was detailed by Goalie Nutrition Management in the bankruptcy documents. Current CEO of Goalie Nutrition and former head of the billion dollar health and well being business unit at Church and Dwight once stated that sometimes when you're successful, you draw scrutiny. And I wholeheartedly agree. But the mo money, mo problems lesson here for any CPG entrepreneur is that you must have financial buffers in place for legal matters, whether that's protecting intellectual property guarding your hero product name from the godfather of apple cider vinegar CPG, or ensuring opportunistic class action lawsuits or competitors don't take you down. But I just want to end with some quick final thoughts around the kind of what's next for Goalie Nutrition. Can the new ownership unlock new growth opportunities? In 2023, Goalie Nutrition did around $119 million in net revenue, but lost close to $63 million. The business consortium acquiring Goalie Nutrition seems to think they can launch their way out of this mess, and I disagree with that strategic approach. Goalie Nutrition needs financial discipline first and foremost. That means walking back a lot of sales, marketing, and product moves that just don't make sense anymore. In doing so, Goalie Nutrition will almost certainly drop further from a top-line revenue perspective over the next few years. After that, Who knows? And I do hope they achieve business growth again, but I'd be focusing more right now on surviving over thriving. Well, I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. If you did, consider hitting that like button to support me. Also, help me get to my new short-term goal of 4,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to see you join me on this journey, but we need to fix the fact that I think just over 90% of you that are watching this YouTube video are not subscribed to my channel, and that makes me extremely sad. But I do want to thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.